Imagine as a concept that we have today, imagine what a better place this world would be if we all knew ourselves a little bit better. Two years ago, I was a, had the great joy of being Lear McKee's guest when she spoke about her, uh, having difficult conversations. That was a very wonderful, memorable day. But there were two great presentations that day that struck with me. Lyra's one, of course, and also the one from Animatronic, who talked about her love of robots and how someday how she saw the vision or they would both become to grow to be sent sentinel beings. At that time, I was in the middle of having my own conversation, and Lyra was one of the people that helped me. It was a long overdue one. It was one that I was having with myself. I'd, I'd had a few tripwires in my life, and I wasn't particularly happy. But I, as an engineer, I used all the tools of my trade to work out how could I get myself back again and learn more about myself. So today I'd like to share a little bit of that with you and I'll talk to you about how I used internet technologies and engineering concepts to understand how a human being works. So firstly, engineers, I'm an engineer, engineers love to make things work, but sometimes they even love it better when things go wrong. Sometimes we even break things when they go wrong just to get a chance to fix them. So uh, this here, make sure you get this back here because it might be in two pieces by the time it comes back to here today. <laughs> so the concept, we look at what happens, analyze it, put it back together, we can see how it works, and you think things like, well, what went wrong? Like not having any breakfast the day before you do a TED talk is not particularly a good thing to do. <laughs> Does root cause analysis work with humans though? Works for technology. It sort of does, but we're a complex system. There's loads of stuff that we can use to help us. But the core of it all is data. There's data everywhere. Medical data, you can have your hearts monitored, you can have your blood pressure done, you can have your PSA level done, you can have your asthma checked. You can look at your intellectual stuff, you can measure your IQ, you can measure your memory, you can measure all sorts of things. You can look at your behavior and you do your analysis. This is all very good, but there's two major problems with it. Firstly, almost all the tests and things that you can do to analyze data of human being are for somebody else, a therapist, a doctor, they're rarely for you. And also, they never fit together in a system. Systems are what make it all work. So if you were to go and do a search on Google Maps and try to find a place, or to buy a jumper, on the, on the internet, you would take, go through a hundred, a thousand different systems that all knit together to become one great big complex system. That's how I see people. The internet, people are internets. They're always there, they're changing, they're evolving, they're connected, there's a million different bits and they always move. And that's why I looked at the internet for ways to understand myself. Not from a static thing to understand bits and pieces, but how to dynamically put it all together and see how that all works. But context is everything. For many generations, humans, especially engineers and scientists, have looked to the natural world to begin to get, to, to get, get concepts and understanding. Wings, for example, of birds form the, 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 the concept behind wings and planes. Honeycomb is the way that m most carbon fiber structures and, and concrete things are put together today. Similarly, computer systems are now looking at more at the way, at the, the way that uh, information flows around the brains and therefore the concept of understanding that a human as a part of an internet system is directly to have a good analogy. So we start at the top, an engineer's view of what goes on in the brain. Now, as engineers, we can't even pretend to be psychologists or psychiatrists. But for me, I look at it in three different ways and say, well, there's a reptilian brain. The brain that actually helps you breathe, that keeps you alive, that's an operating system, just like an operating system in a computer. The core processing, the animal brain is the core processing and where you store stuff, that's an animal system in the brain. The human, the bit that makes us there, the thinking part of it, that's your IO, that's where your features that you buy. And if all else goes wrong, you have a panic button in your enigma that, that, to keep everything ticking along. So in many ways, you can look at the, the, uh, the internet and just come as, as an as a illustration of that. The brain is a complex thing and I find to make it work, Fueling it was the biggest thing that we, could, that we could actually look at, the biggest impact you could got. You don't put coal in a supercar, you don't put AAA batteries in a supercomputer, but fueling our systems, fueling our bodies is the most important thing that we can do. Food is only one aspect of it, 
But building together and understanding your body needs fueled by, by food, by light, by sleep, by meditation, by exercise, and even the gut and your bacteria. All these put it together and knit part into that overall internet system of ourselves to make it good. It's the biggest impact that you can actually have on your body is through the fuel and the food for that. Behaviors. Understanding behaviors. The magical word, there are a number of magical numbers in the, uh, in the world. Three is one of them. And the theory of Enneagram supplies the fact that each of us are not one person, but three people. And I find this to be very relating. This was the light bulb moment light bulb moment for me when I understood that there are three people in me. may not make sense to anyone who's not, never done an Enneagram, but I'm an Enneagram type 8. I'm a leader by normal uh, situations, but if I'm happy, I'll help people grow and develop, and if I'm not happy, I'm a stormtrooper and you better get out of my way. <laughs> this was enlightenment to me, how I saw I could perform in so many different ways in that. And again, that's just the same as the, as the engineering and computing world. A tractor, for example, is one tool, but you can use it to plow a field, you can use it to tow your, your, your cattle to market, you can use it to harvest in your crops. Similarly with software, it's all configurable to do different things. We're just the same, and we're a machine like that. So how do we get to where we are, where we are to be? There's many different models associated with looking at human evolution and behavior. But when I began to look and say to the area that I'm most interested in, and that's in artificial intelligence and machine learning, I thought, this is so similar to what I'm familiar with. We suck in lots of data, we look at the information, we analyze it, we learn from it, we do things differently again, we do things, we make decisions on our life, we feel emotions. It's all to do with machine learning. So as we go through life, we're just a machine learning stuff, and that really helped me understand how that's there, to be happy, to be sad, to be good, to be bad. The problem with this is there's no delete button in humans. We remember everything for every day. My mother has a great quote. <laughs> don't worry, son. A black sheep can still make great stew. Now, I actually don't know what she means with that or what she intends to chop me up someday. But it is a great way of looking at this. As you look into yourself, there are, there were, the more you look, everyone is a shade of gray. Is it black gray? Is it gray gray? Is it white gray? We're all different. You can understand what goes on in each of the individual stuff. But can we be less serious about looking at serious problems? Yes, we can. But the important thing is to put it all into context. The color of sheep is not important. We're all black if we look at that. It took me 12 months of looking at hundreds and hundreds of different tools and systems to, got to, to be able to understand what type of black sheep I was, and another six months to begin to, uh, to be comfortable with it. But now I am, and it's a great way forward. Anybody can do it, but are we back to the beginning? You can learn about yourself, you can understand it, and is that the end? I don't think it is, I think it's just the beginning. Once I've looked at the engineering approach to, to understanding myself, I was able to see that there was only the beginning for much more. How do you find the concepts of compassion? How do you begin to look at spirituality? How do you get connectedness? And for me, it lifted my life to an entirely different level where I could then not only look and understand myself, but begin to reach out and help other people. Anyone can do this. Scientists and engineers may take the, the, the structured approach that I did. Lawyers may use some form of, a, of a, a, an analytical reasoning. Tradespeople will look at building blocks. Writers and poets may look at the flow system that goes with that. Anyone that's been a parent can use the innate, invisible logic that comes with having a child. But it's all within us to do it, and we should think about it. I've had many conversations with people and what they do, and I've always only ever asked them one thing, learn about yourself, and when you have a little bit more, give it back to somebody else. My giving back is within Samaritans. Samaritans is the primary charity within the, the UK and Ireland that deals with suicide prevention. There's 10 suicides per 100,000 population across the UK each year. It's over twice that in Northern Ireland. And there are pockets of our wee country where it is many, many times that again. Numbers are just numbers. But throughout my professional career, I've had six colleagues who have committed suicide. All bar one of them appear to be totally in control. And the question I ask myself every day is, if each and every one of those was able to understand a bit more about themselves, would they be with us amongst us today? 
Awareness is good, but making sure that you can understand yourself is even more important. So I'll ask you all to do one little exercise for me. Imagine all your favorite people in your favorite place doing your favorite things. Then to sit down and imagine what would happen if some of those people were no longer able to do that and be with you. And then it's time to look and see whether you, whether you want to go and join a similar journey to yourself and do that, to, and that you might want to do it in today. So imagine if we understood ourselves a little better and we could give back more. But if we don't do this together and for each other, where will the shadow fall? <laughs>